My name is Enzo de Pellegrin. Uh, when Radmila Schweitzer asked me a few, week, a few weeks ago uh, to, to step in uh, and uh, fill in for Professor Janik, I gladly accepted, uh, um, even though I also lamented the fact that I won't be able to attend the workshop in its entirety. I'm very excited to be here, and it's a great pleasure to introduce the first speaker this afternoon, Dr. Christoph limbeck lilienau who teaches at the University of Vienna and whose research focuses, among other things, on pragmatism, logical positivism, and the philosophy of science. Uh, a few years back, he has uh, produced, together with Fritz Stadler, a companion volume to an exhibit on the Vienna Circle uh, that was shown at the University of Vienna. And most recently, he has co-edited, uh, also with Fritz Stadler, the, I think, the 40th proceedings of the International Wittgenstein Conference uh, on the philosophy of perception. So please join me in welcoming um, Dr. Christoph Lindbeck Lilienau. So uh, thank you very much, Itzo, and uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, so <clears throat> I must then say that I'm, I'm not a Wittgenstein scholar, uh, but mainly work on uh, the Vienna Circle. So, um, and I will, I will, um, I will present what what can be found uh, on Wittgenstein uh, in. Uh, three uh, archives of the Vienna Circle uh, on Schlick, uh, um, also Carnap, Schlick, and uh, Weismann. So uh, we already discussed it that there's further material, for example, in the Rose Rand uh, Nachlass. Uh, I, won't, I won't speak about this, but it, it should also be added in some, some time to that topic. So I'll just give a, a brief introduction and then go through the Nach, uh, last, uh, documents. Um, so the standard history is uh, that Schlick uh, and Wittgenstein got into contact in, uh, with this letter in 1924, in December. And the standard history is that, uh, as Schlick says in the letter, um, a mathematician uh, at the university gave a talk on the Tractatus and that uh, triggered the, the interest in the, of the Vienna Circle, which just began uh, f uh, a few months earlier. Um, that began the interest into the Tractatus. Uh, actually, the story is much more complicated. We know now that, for example, uh, Carnap already knew the Tractatus uh, in uh, 1923. He discovered it in New York at a conference of mathematicians. Schlick wanted already in 23 to write to Wittgenstein in order to order a paper from him, as he says in a letter to Russell. And what really triggered the interest, I think, is the presence of uh, Frank Ramsey in Vienna in the, at the beginning of 20, uh, 1924. Uh, Ramsey wrote in Vienna the paper Foundations of Mathematics. Uh, where he applied uh, Wittgenstein's concept of tautologies to, to mathematical propositions. He met uh, several times Hans Hahn and once uh, Schlick. And Neurot reports that, I quote, at the instigation of Hans Hahn, we began to read carefully and to discuss uh, the Tractatus. So the main uh, further development, I mean, mo most of you know this, is first the reading of the Tractatus in the Vienna Circle from 25 to 27, uh, followed by <coughs> uh, recurring discussions of the Tractatus uh, until uh, 31. Then the encounters uh, between Wittgenstein and the members of the Vienna Circle in 27, 28. Uh, then only restricted to Schlick and Weismann until 36. Further important is the common book project between Wittgenstein and Weismann in 32 and 34. And I think with an underestimated part is the reception of the middle Wittgenstein in the Vienna Circle, which was quite important not only on Weismann, but also on, uh, on uh, Carnap, uh, for example. So which types of sources do we have? Um, we have first, uh, sources on the conversations with Wittgenstein in notes, diary entries, or dictations, so mainly from 27 to 34. Then some copies of Wittgenstein's uh, typescripts in the, 
in an atlas of members of the Vienna Circle. Then also talks Weismann gave in 1930 on the philosophy of uh, Wittgenstein. So there are several talks, and it's not clear how, how much they are related to conversations he had. Uh, furthermore, there are these different versions of uh, Weismann's, the book Weismann wanted to write on Wittgenstein's philosophy. Further important document is, I think, uh, Weismann's seminars, where we have uh, protocols. Seminars Weismann gave from 13, uh, 29 to 36. Other sources are, then I, I won't speak about that, uh, works of members of Vienna Circle based on Wittgenstein's philosophy, or also the correspondence, which I won't include here. So just uh, to begin uh, with the review, uh, first Carnap's uh, Nachlass. So Carnap's Nachlass is mainly in Pittsburgh, at the University of Pix Pittsburgh. A small a part of it is at uh, UCLA. So here we have a famous letter, um, a letter written by Wittgenstein to Ramsey in 27, which uh, this letter was uh, dictated by Wittgenstein to Schlick, and Carnap typed it. And we have uh, journal entries of Carnap about uh, the conversation with Wittgenstein about this uh, letter, which uh, the main topic of the letter is the controversy between Wittgenstein and Ramsey about the foundation of mathematics. So I think um, now the, um, the Journal of Carnap is being edited and will appear probably in uh, two or three years. And there are many entries on uh, the uh, on the contacts with uh, Wittgenstein. So here we have one, one entry. He says, uh, that's actually, actually the first encounter. Evening at Schlick's place, there's Weismann and Wittgenstein for the first, first time. Very interesting, original, sympathetic man, strongly against Esperanto because not grown. An artistic nature. On identity, his objections against Ramsey, he always takes rapidly and intuitively a position, then reflects on it in order to justify it. Then uh, one week sp uh, later, uh, he uh, kind of says, evening uh, with uh, Wittgenstein, Schlick, and Weismann at my place, nice dinner. Wittgenstein tells us about Norway after that he dictates uh, the letter to Ramsey, the letter that we see here. Um, Carnap made also further notes, so actually they're, they're quite brief on conversations he had with Wittgenstein. So that's, uh, Carnap used also an, always a shorthand. You see that on the, on the left side. And the transcription, so that's also the, the discussion on uh, the nature of mathematical propositions, if there are tautologies, as Ramsey thought, or not, as Wittgenstein uh, defended. Uh, that was a big discussion in the Vienna Circle in 27, 28. Um, so, um, Another topic of discussion, so here uh, Carnap says in his diary um, that Schlick had an objection against his uh, um, book, The Logische Aufbau der Welt. There is a, a basic concept in, the, in Carnap's book is a, what he calls quasi-analysis. That means how, to, how you get from a total experience uh, concepts of, for example, uh, bread or for sensory qualities. Um, Wittgenstein was strongly against his, this concept of uh, quasi-analysis and kind of uh, makes notes in his journal about that. And there are also notes uh, uh, on his discussions with Weismann on, on Wittgenstein's um, objections against uh, the Aufbau. Um, a second uh, important item is um, Wittgenstein's talks on the philosophy of, uh, sorry, Weismann's talks on the philosophy of Wittgenstein. So in the Vienna Circle, he gave a series of, of seven talks, uh, which uh, are obviously based on his conversations he, he had with Wittgenstein. 
and he, he, he strongly pushes uh, um, Wittgenstein's position against the uh, Ramsian explanation of, of uh, mathematics. Uh, so these uh, are in, in Carnap's uh, Nachlass kind of took notes on these talks and they're quite uh, long uh, notes on, on Weismann's talks uh, from uh, 1930. Uh, here there's the transcription. Um, so I, I won't go into the details. Um, so uh, one, one basic argument of, of Weismann is that one shouldn't define uh, numbers based on, on Frege's and uh, Russell's conception of classes. So numbers defined by classes, but one should use uh, Wittgenstein's method of, of defining them by operations. So here he has a contrast between the, the Russellian uh, Fregean view and uh, the Wittgensteinian view of mathematics. Um, another item, so Carnap wrote uh, an autobiography which has been published in the sh uh, what's called the Schilf volume uh, of a uh, sort of famous series on living philosophers. Um, he has written it in, 19, in, in, in the 50s, published in 1963. Uh, but there is a longer version of the autobiography in uh, at the UCLA, uh, and for example, there is a long, a long passage on uh, his conflict with Wittgenstein, which is not included in the autobiography. So it's kind of an, uh, so. Uh, to sum up, he says um, he never never encountered such a hatred in his life uh, as that which Wittgenstein seems to have against him. Uh, so he complains that f first there was this plagiarism affair and then uh, uh, some students um, asked Wittgenstein if they could see, uh, if they could uh, give to other people the transcripts of his lectures and Wittgenstein so kind of said, said that he wants to see a list of the people who will receive these transcripts and he crossed out the name of Carnap. Uh, so Carnap says, uh, I quote that in German, im, um, er fragte nach der Liste der Lamen und dann billigte alle außer meinen. In meinem Leben habe ich niemals auch nur etwas Ähnliches erlebt wie die, diesen Hass gegen mich. Ich habe keine hinreichende Erklärung, die hätte wohl nur ein Psychoanalytiker geben können. So, so he says, uh, I, he doesn't uh, understand this conflict and uh, a psychologist could perhaps explain it. So that's mainly uh, what can be found in, uh, in Carnap's uh, Nachlass. So notes on discussions, no entries in, uh, in the journal, and uh, notes on, on Weismann's talks. Uh, so the Schlick Nachlass has been, I think, well researched by the Wittgenstein community. So. I don't think there will be much uh, new material, so I, I just point to three aspects first, um, which, which are perhaps not uh, so well known. First, um, um, Schlick's uh, manuscript on logic from, from 29, then some notes on the Tractatus, and early versions of Weismann's book. So Schlick uh, wrote, wanted to write a kind of uh, logic in 29, and there are many um, um, long passages on Wittgenstein. Uh, this, this manuscript has just been published in the Schlick edition. Uh, so it's more, it's perhaps more interesting for the reception of uh, Wittgenstein in the Vienna Circle than for, for the Wittgenstein uh, scholars themselves. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting source for the, for the reception. Um, there are also other, other documents like this one, so it's, it's in shorthand, it's notes on, uh, on the Tractatus. It seems to have been, it seems to be from 29 and I cannot say if the, what, what is in them and if it has connections to, to conversations with Wittgenstein or not. So there are several uh, pieces like uh, this in the Nachlass. Um, 
and some more famously uh, uh, typescripts, like the, the famous uh, dictation to Schlick from 1933, which exists in shorthand and typescript and in different versions. So that's not the dictation uh, you see. That's not the dictation of 33. That's another manuscript, a uh, typescript. Um, so the, the famous dictation exists in several versions. And here I show another uh, typescript, which is uh, called, uh, which seems to be connected to the dictations. Uh, Wie kann man von dem Verstehen und Nichtverstehen eines Satzes reden? It's uh, 37 pages. Uh, so I'm not an expert, so I don't know if, uh, how, where it is in, in the Wittgenstein corpus exactly. The other shorter, Typescripts, which I mentioned, uh, D14 and D13. Uh, so that's uh, um, mainly the text directly connected to Wittgenstein. And what we can also find in Schlick are different chapters of, uh, of uh, Weismann's book project. So in the, in the Schlick Nachlass, you find, ma you find ma mainly the, the chapters which have already been published in uh, Baker's book, The Voices of Wittgenstein. I only found two other uh, chapters which are not included in Baker's book. Uh, but I will, go, I will go more in detail in the Weismann Nachlass uh, into this uh, uh, topic. Because the Weismann Nachlass obviously had must, has much more material on the on Weismann's book project. Uh, so in Weismann's Nachlass, so I must say I was in the in the Weismann Nachlass uh, before I knew that this conference will happen, and I was looking uh, into another topic, namely Weismann's connection to the Vienna Circle, and not the connection to Wittgenstein. So I didn't look into the boxes which are connected to the conversations with the Vienna Circle, uh, uh, Weismann's conversations. Uh, with the Vienna Circle, and, uh, with, uh, with Wittgenstein and the Vienna Circle, so the book Wittgenstein and the Vienna Circle, edited by McGuinness. So I didn't look into that material, and I didn't look into material which uh, was then used for Baker's, uh, Baker's book. So I, I looked in other material, and I will present what, what I have on, on these other aspects. So three aspects, the Weismann's talks from 1930, uh, some material on the, on the book and Weismann's seminars. So as I already mentioned, Weismann gave seven talks in the Vienna Circle on uh, Wittgenstein's philosophy, which I already mentioned in the Schlick, uh, Carnap uh, Nachlass. One talk on the nature of logic, which is strongly based on the Tractarian view, and another famous talk, which has also been already published, uh, the Nature of Mathematics, the Standpoint of Wittgenstein, which was presented at the Königsberg Conference, 1930. So that talk, per se, is not interesting because it's published already, but there is uh, many, there's uh, material connected to that talk, which uh, Weismann uh, noted. So several kind of uh, short pieces or chapters, for example, this one on Gleichungen, so equations and tautologies. So that's again the conflict uh, uh, Ramsey Wittgenstein. So obviously it seems to be um, uh, notes connected to the to the presentation of uh, Wittgenstein's uh, philosophy of mathematics in the at the Königsberg uh, conference. Now concerning Weismann's book. So as far as we know, the uh, Weismann. Uh, was supposed to write uh, um, a book on, uh, on Wittgenstein's philosophy in, so apparently it began in uh, 27 or 28. Uh, it was supposed to be the first book uh, in the series which was edited by Schlick on the, the series of the Vienna Circle. And he took, uh, it took him 11 years to, to f finish the book. Uh, and there are three phases mainly. First phase where he tried to, exp ex uh, to explain the tra Tractatus. Uh, it said in letters that this, this book was already finished in at the end of 31. But then uh, there were some objections also from Wittgenstein who thought that uh, his philosophy has evolved uh, since so much that 
the book wouldn't really represent his philosophy. So the second phase was the collaboration between uh, Wittgenstein on the book project uh, together with Weismann, perhaps to produce a, a common uh, TypeScript. Uh, these parts were mainly uh, included in Baker's book. That was the phase from uh, 32 to 34. And then uh, Weismann and Wittgenstein agreed that they couldn't uh, write a book together, and Weismann continued alone uh, his project, uh, which was uh, uh, sent to the editor in 39, but only published in, uh, in, a 19, in the English version in 1965 and in the German in 1976. So now, naturally, it's very interesting to, to have some information about uh, the different phases uh, of the book and also to, to get some information on which, uh, how much this book was based on conversations he had with Wittgenstein and perhaps to uh, yeah, get more information about this uh, interaction. So there are not many chapters on the early version which was uh, read in 31 here. I just, uh, it's a longer TypeScript. Uh, uh, here on, on verification. So the TypeScript is on uh, different topics, but here I show a page on verification. Uh, so there exist some other uh, uh, fragments of this early version. Uh, so I won't talk about the, the later versions, because they are mainly published then in Baker and in the final uh, version, which is uh, published in book form. Um, a, pro a problem in Baker is that uh, Weismann's uh, TypeScript uh, type chapters are never dated, so you can't really say from when, uh, when did he write it, and on, you don't know based on which material he wrote them. And, uh, so it would be interesting to like get some information about that. Um, when were these chapters written, etc. Uh, I think one one source could be Weismann's uh, seminars. So Weismann uh, gave uh, the so-called uh, Schlick Pro seminars. He gave it uh, gave them alone. So he, this was his his seminar basically. And we have a very well documented uh, sources on these seminars because their protocols were taken by students. Uh, sometimes uh, TypeScripts were made based on these protocols. And these seminars are always on very contemporary issues of, uh, of topics uh, connected to either to Wittgenstein's philosophy or to ac actual debates in the Vienna Circle. Um, so they give a very detailed uh, insight into Weismann's uh, philosophic development and perhaps also information about his uh, collaboration with Wittgenstein. The advantage of the seminars is that we can date them really exactly, so almost weekly, uh, given on the entries uh, of the uh, seminar protocols. So here you see, for example, from the seminar of 1930, a protocol which was made by uh, Karl Hempel, who was then a student of uh, Weismann in the Weismann seminar, then were made uh, some typescripts of, of these seminars. Um, and we, we really have for all this uh, from, uh, so this is 14 uh, session, 14 semesters uh, he taught seminars and we have really uh, Doc, all these seminars uh, documented. Um, so here, for example, a, a seminar from 1932. Um, we just looked up this morning, uh, when, when did Wittgenstein use the first time uh, the term Sprachspiele? Um, so Weismann used the term in the seminars in 33, uh, but in 32, shortly after Wittgenstein had began, began to use the term, he he uses terms like uh, Spiele der, der Sprache, as we can see uh, here. Um, uh, here he says uh, the, 
das Spiel der Sprache ist offen and there, there are very long discussions on the, on the comparison of uh, games uh, with uh, language and how we can use uh, games as a model for, um, for, the, um, for analyzing uh, language. Um, yes, so that's basically the Weizmann, uh, Weizmann seminar. So these sources, uh, as far as I know, they, they are never used in the, in, the, in the literature on the Vienna Circle. So that's really a new source also for the people in the Vienna Circle. And I think they can also be, use, be useful for Wittgenstein uh, uh, scholars. Uh, so it's really a very interesting uh, source, in my opinion. So uh, naturally, in the Weizmann, so I, as I said, I didn't systematically look for Wittgenstein sources in the Weizmann Nachlass, but we can find also uh, other, other things like a copy of the Brown book here. And um, again, TypeScripts, like uh, on um, TypeScript on pain, 11 pages. Um, so as, as conclusion, I want, I want to say that, um, so for people working in the Vienna Circle, it would be really very interesting to, to get a, a, like an overview of, the, of these conversations running from uh, one side, from Ramsey to Wittgenstein, and then from Wittgenstein uh, to the Vienna Circle. Because we, we find uh, many topics from Ramsey coming into the Vienna Circle. Obviously, they were not, they were always introduced through some intermediaries. So it would be really interesting to, have, to, to map uh, these, these conversations um, between, uh, for example, these uh, three pairs to get a, um, a view of the development, uh, one side of logical empiricism, but perhaps also for, for the development of the middle Wittgenstein. Um, so that's a question I wanted to ask to the experts, uh, if, uh, if such conversations could be reconstructed, if we have uh, like access to like a notebook of, of Wittgenstein, uh, where here you, you see uh, his, com his uh, meetings with Schlick uh, and Weismann. So it would be interesting to have uh, a list of all his meetings. And um, so, yes, so that material could be used m not only for uh, getting a better picture of the reception of the Tractatus and how the internal problems of the Tractatus evolved. That obviously, the, these topics were strongly discussed in the Vienna Circle on the uh, how tautologies can be used for logicism or not. Uh, what's the nature of uh, elementary propositions? What's the nature of general propositions and hypotheses? So these topics come up all the time in, in the discussions in the Vienna Circle. And they obviously come in through certain discussions. And as I mentioned also, it would be also interesting to, to see the reception of the middle Wittgenstein in the Vienna Circle. I think there are more, much more connections, for example, to Canap's uh, since uh, logical syntax uh, uh, is much more connected to the middle, the position of the middle Wittgenstein than a lot of scholars uh, think. Uh, so, yes, that's all I had to say. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, let's start Q&A after this fascinating talk. I'm sure there will be a lot of questions. Alois? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Christoph. This is, I think, extremely interesting and valuable. Uh, I have many questions, but one would be, which was Weismann's self-understanding in these seminars? Was he presenting, as you said, the, it, this gives us a detailed insight into his philosophy. So was he presenting his own philosophical views? Was he presenting something which he thinks now we as proponents of the Wissenschaftliche Weltauffassung should teach, or was he presenting the newest coming from Wittgenstein? What, what is it, what he wanted to communicate there? So, um, 
I must say, for, first, I, uh, there's, there's some, uh, some uh, of these seminars have been transcribed by Manin, and they are, so I, I know them for several times, for several years, um, a year or something. The material I got now is, I, I just have it for one week, so I, I haven't looked to, through all this. But as far as, can, as I can say, it's a mixture of all, all that. So they're really, they're really seminars which are strongly related, for example, to how, how can you, um, how, how does language represent reality? And he, he makes seminars on, on Brentano, for example, two, two semesters. Uh, on intentionality. That's obviously not at all connected uh, to Wittgenstein. Or not, not really. Uh, so they are really his own things, then uh, influences from the Vienna Circle and, and obviously also from Wittgenstein. I, th I think it's, it's impossible to, uh, what he said, uh, to, to really distinguish. You have to look in the, into mm -hmm. the the text and the int into the details of the text. So there are long passages on uh, language game, and that's obviously obviously strongly connected to Wittgenstein. Other, other seminars are not connected to that. And but would, so would he sometimes say, no, this is from Wittgenstein, and over <laughs> there, Carnap may disagree with this view of Wittgenstein. Would he sometimes? Yes, yes, sure. Say such? Yes. Things. For example, there's a one uh, seminar from 32. Um, uh, so there are all these remarks of uh, Wittgenstein on, on expectation, for example, um, in, in uh, um, mental states and expectation stuff, and the objections against Russell, for example. So he explicitly, explicitly says, yeah, uh, we often he says we uh, we have this position, uh, we are against uh, Rust, Russell's or, or Carnap's position. Um, uh, so how often he mentions the name Wittgenstein himself, I, I can't uh, now say exactly. Um, so actually, he's, he's, he, he often says we. <laughs> so when he, he doesn't mean himself, but uh, I think he, he thinks uh, Wittgenstein, uh, Weismann, and Schlick okay. uh, uh, have this view. Lamborde and the... Uh, like Wittgenstein and the people who are close to Wittgenstein in the circle, uh, but it's 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 close to the thing which is in in Baker, where you can't really often say uh, is it now who is who is talking, uh, is is it Weismann or is it just uh, reporting Wittgenstein? So, but I have I have to say I have to look more closely in the into the seminars uh, to 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 answer the question in. More precisely. Okay. <coughs> I think I have a question. Uh, have you got any any more detailed view of what was going on there when this letter to Ramsey came about? It seems a bit special. Wittgenstein would dictate the letter to Schlick and Carnap types it out. Why not write the letter himself and He's send used it to doing that, I think. Perhaps he couldn't type or... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, he, could, but have why write, why he would could have written it. Uh, okay. I, it's a... <laughs> so I, I thought it's, uh, I mean, uh, like, mm -hmm. a, how do you say, an independent scholar dictates to the professor of philosophy in Vienna a letter that seems strange or... From a, because of the difference of authority or something, or I think with, I, I also wondered about this. Why, why, why this the question like was this known to, to dictate to people to in the, various the, contexts, to yeah. students, to yes. G. Moore, to and so Moore on, to Russell. Like. I mean, he was in the habit of having an yeah. amanuensis, um, yeah. among other things. So I think yeah. it's not completely on. So the, the, the setting is they meet at Schlick's place, right? At, uh, uh, at Carnap's place, At yeah. Carnap's place, they, they have a conversation. They have a conversation on, Ram, on the Ramsey paper. And then the idea comes about, well, why not put this together in, in, in a letter to Ramsey? And then Wittgenstein dictates, and Schlick takes it, takes it down. 
uh, Wittgenstein says, and later it's typed. I find this is a, a special arrangement here. Um, I don't know, I mean, yeah. depends who can write shorthand perhaps, or I don't know. So he dictates that to someone who uh -huh. writes shorthand mm -hmm. and then uh, another one types it. Um, and is mm. the shorthand of the letter still in the Schlicknachlass or is it somewhere in? Uh, I have to look up, I can mm -hmm. ask you. I, I, have, I, have, I have the Nachlass. I didn't check that. There's a, a part is missing here, it's, but it's, we have the, it's, I mean the letter is published with the, the he, he added a handwritten uh, part on the top. Where he says uh, he Ramsey should answer to Schlick about about this problem. Yeah. Okay. So. In relation to Alois's question, I thought of a remark which Brian McGuinness made uh, in the publication. He's thinking of Euthyphro's dilemma. You think and you can't write at the same time. You talk and you can't yeah. think. So since Wittgenstein did a lot of this, it seems the answer is straightforwardly. He liked to think and dictate to others as he was sorting things out, which would uh, A, explain the point that he does it at all, and B, the two different drafts shows that he's rethinking all the time. And it seems to me that that explains a lot about the dictations <coughs> and his manner of going is possessed and trying to locate within his mind what his point is or the correct focus. Mm -hmm. So I must say that, uh, so there's a letter where Weisman explains why he can't, whether they can't write the book together after trying to do so for two years. And he, he says basically the same, that uh, often Wittgenstein dictates something uh, in a sp very spontaneous way, and then Weisman, Weisman notes that down and gives more arguments, and when he shows that uh, to Wittgenstein again, Wittgenstein is again completely against it, and the, he says actually there was one uh, dictation uh, from uh, Wittgenstein to Weismann. Uh, so Weismann just noted down uh, what Wittgenstein said and then typed it and two months later showed it to Wittgenstein and Wittgenstein said, said that that's completely wrong so you have to, we have to, re uh, that has to be rejected. And then Weismann said, yeah, but you, you dictated this yourself. And she said, I don't believe you. Uh, <laughs> and then Weismann, uh, <laughs> said, I will find, I will find the notes, uh, I will show you that you, you, you dictated that. And he, he showed him the notes and said, look here with the date, you dictated this. And Weissmann said, uh, Wittgenstein said, yeah, okay. So, but still was against it. So, uh, yes. Maybe. So Weissmann was trying to be more, much more systematic, not in the Wittgensteinian style of, of more short remarks and, and like Wittgenstein was annoyed by that somehow. Uh, Weizmann is always very like clear and explicit and uh, and yeah, some somehow perhaps distorting or yeah. Could I just round off in May? <coughs> um, I think the whole point of the disagreement dis devolves on the following. Wittgenstein is coming from his own tractatus background, where logic yep. is the basis. Roughly, logic reduces in some form to, uh, mathematics rather, reduces in some form to logic. And his whole approach hitherto has been Fragian in a rough sense, and then expands it a bit. But he's escaping from that, and I think the focus is why he's changeable, isn't just that he's witless and can't remember, he's evolving into his own crisis, which is, I leave logic in the form of system sense as the basis for discourse. I'm going towards applied and pure mathematics that has no system 
And that's, yeah. I think, what's going on and the reason why. Apart from the fact he never should try and write a book together with someone else. As has been said, he really needed a good editor even when he wrote well. But I think the point really is that he's moving from logic in the formal sense and the system sense as the basis for discourse. And even if it's only an analogical basis, he's using pure and applied mathematics. And that's yeah. where he's going in the 1930s. And I think yeah. that's why there's all this dispute he's fighting through. Yes, but Weizmann was following him on this, on this point. So there was, I mean, uh, the Vienna Circle people th said that, th thought that Wittgenstein had resolved the problem of mathematics for empiricism because mathematics is based on, uh, on logic and Wittgenstein was against that. So he was heavily against it. This all, all his fight uh, with uh, Ramsey. Sorry, what you is the age he was against? You cannot, you cannot reduce mathematics to, to tautologies. Oh, yeah. Right. So I, I agree with and that. And then uh, Weismann follows Wittgenstein and, and, and goes in one direction and Carnap thinks, yeah, we can say that mathematics are also tautologies and it's based on logic. Uh, and that's a, that's, a, that's a division in, inside the, the Vienna circle with the, but Weismann, Weismann goes on, on the, same, the same direction with, with Wittgenstein. And, but there are still <laughs> other conflicts, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so would you agree, uh, Christoph, that the distance between Wittgenstein and the Vienna Circle becomes wider and wider in the later Wittgenstein? So I, I, my question is, was there any reception of the, for example, the ph philosophical investigations by members of the Vienna Circle? Uh, and let me, just yeah. one little uh, remark. I, if you read this remark in Culture and Value, yep. when Wittgenstein speaks about this typical Western scientist, which who never will, under, he doesn't matter if they will ever understand him because the mind is completely different from mine. It's something like this. From what? From Their mind, they are thinking, is completely different from my way yeah. of thinking. And I always thought this is uh, just a remark concerning the members of Vienna Circle, which he tries to probably. keep a distance to them. Pro probably, yes. I would agree on this remark, yes. But I think, uh, I mean, the in interaction is very complex. Uh, so um, so there's a kind of scientific attitude that most of the people in the Vienna Circle had, he, he was certainly against, against it. But, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, but, but uh, so obviously the, the the Vienna Circle stopped in '36, so there was no. <laughs> yes, but uh, I don't remember so much from the '40s or '50s. Don't remember. No. So there are some remarks by Carnap uh, on on the later Wittgensteinians of the '40s or '50s, uh, the ordinary language philosophy, and this, and he's quite uh, against 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 that. But I think, uh, I mean, obviously the Vienna Circle wouldn't exist without the Tractatus, so there was a huge influence on that. And I think all this, all this middle Wittgenstein when, uh, is extremely important for also for the Vienna Circle. Uh, so so when, when Wittgenstein begins to say that uh, log logic and mathematics are only cal calculi, and we, we can freely choose uh, different forms of calculi, that, that has a huge impact also on, on Carnap's view. Uh, uh, and, and I mean, Wittgenstein evolves from the Tractatus in a, in a certain direction, and many, many of the men, members are also evolved in a similar direction, and then you have some divergences later on. But I think, uh, uh, so I, I think the, the, the first Wittgenstein obviously has a strong influence, the middle Wittgenstein also, and the late Wittgenstein, uh, then they were, quite in other countries, other worlds, and not much uh, interaction anymore. Uh, even, even in Weismann, Weismann, yeah, still strongly connected to Wittgenstein's views, but he also goes in another, another direction, yeah.
Thank you, I really enjoyed your presentation. I, I was wondering whether you think that reconstructing how these conversations took place, how they, like by making use of the diary, how they met when they were meeting, this would make sense not only for us, like academics, but for another kind of public, no? The kind of public, the kind of public that the Wittgenstein Initiative is trying to approach. Like, um, do you think that in the conversations he had and in this kind of notes that we find in the NACLA from the uh, Viennese circle, can we find things that are interesting for people outside academia that, uh, that reflect how, I mean, the personality of that intellectual kind of atmosphere at the time? Uh, or do you think so that obviously the, so this, so obviously, for example, the Canop's journal, journal he, he writes every day, he was very systematic, so he, every, every day he writes what, what's happening, what, he's, what, he, what is he doing, and you have a uh, huge source and information on every aspect of, of intellectual and cultural life. So I just took out the, like the conversation with Wittgenstein on mathematics, but he writes about everything. I would like uh, uh, seeing an opera by, uh, uh, Kurt Weil, for example, uh, I think we have a talk on Kyla uh, next tomorrow. So he says, uh, I, I, I go to see the uh, op uh, an opera by Kurt Weil with Kyla and stuff like that. So I have a lot of contextual information. Uh, yes, so it depends on the documents. Obviously, in, in, the, in the seminars, you want to, it's, it's really philosophy of mathematics or of language mainly. Uh, it depends on, on the sources, yes. Uh, and the let letters, I didn't mention the letters. You can also not only get information about in the culture. But in connection with Wittgenstein, I mean. So the, I mean, whether we could somehow reconstruct how these things took place and make them uh, appealing for people who are not academics, or you think that it's just too philosophical? Yes. Uh, so I, I, I did a book on, based on this exhibition, <laughs> which has a lot of photos and documents and, and things on, uh, on the arts and of, of the time. And the Vienna Circle, uh, texts and pictures uh, of text logical and pictures. And, and it was written uh, basically for, uh, for non-academics. Non uh, so it's, it's a kind of a intellectual history of the interwar period, um, yeah. But I don't know how, how to, I mean, this, these are um, difficult uh, topics and on, on, I think, uh, yes, these this, this aspects I, I talked about, it's, I, I, I don't see how, how it can be attractive for, for non-philosophers, I don't know. Yes. Strongly against Esperanto because he was wrong. A logistic yes. nature. This is Carnap's comment on Wittgenstein's nature. Yes. And Russell says somewhere exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So this is how philosophers, the pure type like Russell and Carnap, see Wittgenstein, who is obviously different. Uh, and yes. This is only different. Yes. I mean, different. Yeah, sure. They were very fond of science, so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they were not less connected to the. So, I mean, Carnap was a friend of, of the, some of the greatest artists of the 20th century. So, he he had conversations with uh, Kandinsky and uh, with Mohen Noj and talk, gave talks at the Bauhaus. So, he was also connected to the arts, but he wasn't. He had a very different temperament. Um, and when you look at the plagiarism affair, it's, I mean, it's, when you read this letter from 32, uh, like Wittgenstein seems to have, to have been personally hurt by something. And when you read this autobiographical note, it's, it's the same. Hell, I don't know what happened. So they were like personally uh, uh, very different and uh, I don't know.
Copying. Yes. Gesamt correspondence. Yes. Uh, and and he, he was right. So. Schlick, Schlick is trying to, yes. uh, uh, to, yeah, to balance between Carnap and Wittgenstein. And he also comments Wittgenstein is highly strong and very uh, easily, uh, very easy to, to be offended at the moment. Yeah. This, yes. Yeah, so. I think he was right, he, he was even right. I mean, I don't know if, how to react to so, such a thing, but obviously he kind of put some, uh, put the ideas which obviously came from Wittgenstein into, into this paper. Yeah. Only this conception of hypothesis, it's obviously it comes from Wittgenstein, so he was right in, 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 that, in that point. Um, but, but they didn't care. So yeah, Weisman, he yeah. took uh, the stuff from everywhere. He didn't care who, yeah. who said that, uh, who, who should I credit. So they yeah. <laughs> just took the stuff and put it in, in the next publication. And does, uh, uh, is it uh, by Carnap one of the most famous descriptions of Wittgenstein when uh, they met him quite at the beginning, one of the meeting, and they were expecting, the Vienna Circle was expecting that they will discuss philosophy, and Wittgenstein said, sat down with his back to them and read uh, Rabindranath Tagore. I think this, is, this comes from Karnap as well. Uh, I, I saw that some, some time ago. It's, it's an anecdote either. F no, I don't think it's Karnap. I think it's perhaps Feigl or something. Ah, OK, Feigl. It's, I don't re remember. I saw the passage like one year ago. But now I forgot where I saw it. So I think perhaps it's fine or something. But yes. again, in the context but of the Vienna Circle. I mean, circle. that's one meeting uh, and one anecdote. So there are, there are some anecdotes like which are, I mean, they had a lot of meetings as we saw in the, in the a lot of meetings which were on philosophy and not on Tagore and uh, yes. I, I just think what Carlo was asking uh, regarding the audience that we try to, to reach outside of uh, uh, academic circles, uh, they are more interested on, uh, um, on the personalities, what were these people like. And uh, indeed, yeah. there is in the material, uh, in the Vienna Circle Nachlasses, there is material that uh, shows Wittgenstein's personality. Yeah. Um, yes, so that's actually, yeah, that. Um, if I remember stuff like, so actually, I don't remember so much stuff in about like. So I didn't include the letters. So in the correspondence, I naturally, have more yeah. anecdote, like non non philosophical yeah. things. Sh yes, sure, you you get it also. I mean, uh, all, all this conflict about writing this book. It's a highly biographically difficult situation. I mean, uh, Wiseman wants to finish the book, and a lot of conflicts and. Yes, sure. It's it's also yeah. in yes. You can find it. Um, uh, I didn't I didn't emphasize that. Yes. Is your um, book appearing in English? Sorry. Is your book uh, going to be published in English? I hope so. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We're working on it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Good. Are there any more questions? So well. Uh, Break for coffee and pastries after thanking our speaker. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you.